this is a short video. Okay guys, if you've uh, just joined us, we're hopefully going to get the quiz underway shortly. Just having a few technical issues. Don't know why, because I've done a lot of work on the Wi-Fi today to get an even better connection than normal. But, for some ex unexplained reason, at the moment, the software just isn't playing ball. And I've tried the usual thing of turning it off and on again. And even that's not working, so at the moment I'm struggling to get the connection. And without the proper connection, we won't unfortunately be able to run the quiz. I'm going to keep trying. What I'll do in the meantime, I'm going to play the instruction video which will show people how to set up. This is a short video to show you how to log in to play yeah, our interactive online quiz. It's recommended that two devices are used, one to watch the quiz via the live YouTube stream you'll have been given a link to, and the other to set up and use a virtual keypad. To set up the virtual keypad, use your smartphone or tablet and go to buzzerpad.com. You'll then see this page where you need to add your name as you want it to appear. And you need to tap in the pin code shown on the live stream before pressing go in the blue box. Your keypad is now set up, but to activate it, you'll either need to press the finger at the top of the screen or any of the letters. The live stream will show the number of participants and this will change as more people log in. When the quiz gets underway, the questions will be shown on the live stream and they'll also be read out. You need to answer as quickly as possible by pressing the letter corresponding to the answer you think is correct. The points go down as the timer ticks down, so the quicker you answer, the more points you stand to gain. Good luck and hope you enjoy taking part! This is a short video to show you how to log in to play our interactive online quiz. It's recommended that two devices are used, one to watch the quiz via the live YouTube stream you'll have been given a link to, and the other to set up and use a virtual keypad. To set up the virtual keypad, use your smartphone or tablet and go to buzzerpad.com. You'll then see this page where you need to add your name as you want it to appear. And you need to tap in the pin code shown on the live stream before pressing go in the blue box. Your keypad is now set up, but to activate it you'll either need to press the finger at the top of the screen or any of the letters. The live stream will show the number of participants and this will change as more people log in. When the quiz gets underway, the questions will be shown on the live stream and they'll also be read out. You need to answer as quickly as possible by pressing the letter corresponding to the answer you think is correct. The points go down as the timer ticks down, so the quicker you answer, the more points you stand to gain. Good luck and hope you enjoy taking part! This is a short video to show you how to log in to play our interactive online quiz. It's recommended that two devices are used, one to watch the quiz via the live YouTube stream you'll have been given a link to, 
and the other to set up and use a virtual keypad. To set up the virtual keypad, use your smartphone or tablet and go to buzzerpad.com. You'll then see this page where you need to add your name as you want it to appear. And you need to tap in the pin code shown on the live stream before pressing go in the blue box. Your keypad is now set up, but to activate it you'll either need to press the finger at the top of the screen or any of the letters. The live stream will show the number of participants and this will change as more people log in. When the quiz gets underway, the questions will be shown on the live stream and they'll also be read out. You need to answer as quickly as possible by pressing the letter corresponding to the answer you think is correct. The points go down as the timer ticks down, so the quicker you answer, the more points you stand to gain. Good luck and hope you enjoy taking part! This is a short video to show you how to log in to play our interactive online quiz. It's recommended that two devices are used, one to watch the quiz via the live YouTube stream you'll have been given a link to, and the other to set up and use a virtual keypad. To set up the virtual keypad, use your smartphone or tablet and go to buzzerpad.com. You'll then see this page where you need to add your name as you want it to appear and you need to tap in the pin code shown on the live stream before pressing go in the blue box. Your keypad is now set up, but to activate it you'll either need to press the finger at the top of the screen or any of the letters. The live stream will show the number of participants and this will change as more people log in. When the quiz gets underway, the questions will be shown on the live stream and they'll also be read out. You need to answer as quickly as possible by pressing the letter corresponding to the answer you think is correct. The points go down as the timer ticks down, so the quicker you answer, the more points you stand to gain. Good luck and hope you enjoy taking part! This is a short video. Wow, how relieved am I right now <laughs> managing to uh, get this working? after a number of uh, failed attempts. So the good news is that uh, we will be having a quiz. It was uh, touch and go at one point. Tried the old uh, standby of turning it off and turning it on again, and then changing to different ports. So eventually we managed to get it working. So uh, thanks for joining us. And you can see there, the ones who played before are logging in now very quickly on the uh, buzzerpad.com, the pin number there, seven, 0315 so go on to buzzerpad.com once you've pressed in your pin number 70315 and you've put in your username and you need to press the screen as well important you do that because it won't register so press the screen either the finger or one of the letters and you'll then be registered the uh, logins shooting up towards 100 which is great to see So I can see them coming in slightly ahead of you and we're already up to about, well, just over 90 now. So I'm sure we're going to pass the 100 mark. We've got some great questions once again set by Phil Tooley, including some picture questions for the first time. Now, last week, the eagle-eyed ones amongst you will have seen that uh, there was a typo. Apologies for that. I'm going to blame the fact that drink might have been taken uh, the night before when I was uh, quickly inputting the uh, the questions. Well, this time I have double checked, being over the questions uh, two or three times, making sure that they're right. I don't think it had an impact on the score any anyway, to be honest, or the outcome last week. I think it was to do with the uh, confusion over the century. But uh, as I say, I'm sure that didn't have an impact on the scoring. Uh, we're shooting, well, we shot past 100. Now up to 111 on my screen. I think you're seeing 110. In fact, just up to 111 now, I can see. Well, I should point out as well, I've done quite a few of these uh, on different channels uh, while we've been on the virtual lockdown. 
Um, just make sure that your live stream is properly live, if you like. It's trying to explain it really because I did find somebody trying to play the other night, not on a Chesterfield quiz, I should hasten to add. One that I was doing, and I think somebody, well, there was two problems. There was one, somebody watching a recorded quiz, which of course they were trying to play along and then couldn't understand why they couldn't uh, log in. So they were using a different pin. And also, I found somebody who was watching it where they hadn't got the bar on their YouTube right up to date. So in other words, they were watching perhaps something about two minutes ago. So of course they were in delay. And when they were pressing B, they were perhaps answering the previous question or even two questions ago. So very careful about that. You've just got to make sure that uh, you are getting the live stream properly. So make sure that the bar has caught up. So if you see the, the bar on your YouTube, make sure that you're not, you've not paused it and then suddenly playing it and you're behind us. So just make sure about that. So I'm just gonna play, it is gonna be a delayed kickoff, partly down to the fact that uh, we had the issue with the sign in. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna play the video again the instruction video for those who have not played before i know the regulars amongst us will uh, know how to sign in but i'm just going to play that just for the latecomers this is a short video to show you how to log in to play our interactive online quiz it's recommended that two devices are used one to watch the quiz via the live youtube stream you'll have been given a link to and the other to set up and use a virtual keypad to set up the virtual keypad, use your smartphone or tablet and go to buzzerpad.com. You'll then see this page where you need to add your name as you want it to appear. And you need to tap in the pin code shown on the live stream before pressing go in the blue box. Your keypad is now set up, but to activate it you'll either need to press the finger at the top of the screen or any of the letters. The live stream will show the number of participants and this will change as more people log in. When the quiz gets underway, the questions will be shown on the live stream and they'll also be read out. You need to answer as quickly as possible by pressing the letter corresponding to the answer you think is correct. The points go down as the timer ticks down, so the quicker you answer, the more points you stand to gain. Good luck and hope you enjoy taking part. Okay, so if you've joined us while the the video was playing, just to let you know that um did have one or two issues, but now we're in. And uh, you can see the pin number there, 70315. So if you tap that into buzzerpad.com on your phone or tablet, And then what you need to do is tap the screen, either the finger at the top or one of the letters, and then that will sign you in. So up to 125 now showing on my screen. You're slightly behind on that. 124 I can see on the live stream. Now it's caught up 125. So just while we're waiting for people to sign in, welcome first of all. Just to note that you shouldn't press your answer. It's going to be a multiple choice. So we'll read out the questions. There's 20 in total. I'll read out the questions and wait until the timer starts before pressing your answer. Because if you go in too early, then it won't register. You can press it any time during the 30 seconds that are counting down. But if you do go in too early, you'll find that your answer won't be registered. So that uh, makes it a bit fairer, I think, rather than people giving an advantage to those who read quickly and uh, read the question and then jump in before we've uh, actually done it. So it's time for me to read it out. I'll tell you when it's going to start. And then you can't change your answer as well. Very important. I think some people changing the mind during the 30 seconds, you can't actually change your answer. So I can see that the 
logins are still taking place. Good to see last week's defending champion, Tim, otherwise known as West Bar Spire, right? He's with us. I'm going to make a note of the pin number as well because once I leave the screen, I can't see that. Important to note, as Phil points out in the comments, I've seen plenty of comments on the YouTube channel, um, don't leave buzzer pad because I think you will be locked out. So keep open your buzzer pad app. Oh, we see that Zeus is back. He was the winner in the first quiz. So uh, a battle, I'm sure, is going to recommence at the top of the table. Zeus, the first winner, and then Westbar Sparite, who was second in the first one. So hopefully our connections will remain stable. So we can't do anything about people's internet connections. I've been working on mine today, so uh, that's a little stronger than it was before. We're up to 132. We'll get underway in uh, a couple of minutes, I would say. Just one more play of the video for those of you who joined us just to show you how to sign in. This is a short video to show you how to log in to play our interactive online quiz. It's recommended that two devices are used, one to watch the quiz via the live YouTube stream you'll have been given a link to, and the other to set up and use a virtual keypad. To set up the virtual keypad, use your smartphone or tablet and go to buzzerpad.com. You'll then see this page where you need to add your name as you want it to appear. And you need to tap in the pin code shown on the live stream before pressing go in the blue box. Your keypad is now set up, but to activate it you'll either need to press the finger at the top of the screen or any of the letters. The live stream will show the number of participants and this will change as more people log in. When the quiz gets underway, the questions will be shown on the live stream and they'll also be read out. You need to answer as quickly as possible by pressing the letter corresponding to the answer you think is correct. The points go down as the timer ticks down, so the quicker you answer, the more points you stand to gain. Good luck and hope you enjoy taking part! Okay, so I know that we're all... Itching, itching to, to get, get started, started but we'll just give a moment for people who've just joined us to sign in great to see 140 logged in now so uh, a substantial increase on last week's turnout just we had just over 100 so a couple of uh, reminders before we start don't press your answer before the timer starts and you can't change your answer also good advice from phil on the uh, comments on YouTube, that uh, you shouldn't leave. Once you're on buzzer pad, don't leave it because you will find yourself uh, locked out. I think you can rejoin, but uh, you won't be able to get your figure back. So uh, if you've got your your points in the bag, then you'll lose those. So remain on buzzerpad.com. And just one final reminder that you need to, on buzzerpad.com, put in your username. Then the pin number, 70315, then tap the screen. Important you do that, you need to tap the screen just to make sure that it's registered and then we're ready to go. So I think we'll now get underway. So if we're all ready, what I'll do is I'll take a look at the screen. because It will show us who's actually logged in. So if we see there, see some of the names that are on there. If your name isn't on the list, then you will need to register. So if you have a quick look, if you have a scan down those names, I won't read them all out because we'll be here all night. Some familiar names though there. If your name isn't on the list, then you will need to quickly register because clearly something hasn't happened right so if you look down the 
list. And in fact, a friend of mine who said he was going to use a pseudonym tonight, so I don't know who he is. I think I've spotted him. I won't out him at this stage, but I'm pretty sure I know who that is then. And it's the name of a former player. Very much a, let's say, a cult hero. I'll say no more in a moment. Okay, so have a quick scan down the, uh, the list. See if you're on there. Zeus, the uh, first winner, the one that we did, is on there. And then we'll go on to another page. Sorry about the delayed kickoff. For those of you who didn't uh, sign in early, there was a bit of a scary moment when I thought we weren't going to be able to connect. But uh, to my immense relief, managed to uh, get it sorted so on to the next page and still they go so there's more there's a few more to add to those as well hopefully you'll see your name on one of these pages i've added some more before we get started as well i'll see if there's any more on the next page 147 so 147 just give you a moment just to have a look there we're just a quarter past now so 15 minutes delayed kickoff will get underway in just a moment so so if you haven't seen your name there if you think that you've not registered then you might quickly want to try again but i think we need to get underway so no test questions this week we're going to get straight into it. Remember, don't press your answer before the timer starts. So the first question, how many players, including used substitutes, made their Chessfield debuts in the opening match of the 2017-18 season? That's a 3-1 home defeat against Grimsby Town. Is it 6, 7, 8 or 9? And you can answer from now. So plenty of answers uh, coming in. We're up to over 100 already. 10 seconds remain. If you've got no idea, just press anything in the next few seconds. You'll get a chance to at least pick up some points. A few seconds left. 100, 132 having a go. The answer was D, nine. So uh, let's see how many got nine right. Only 10. So I'll give you the list from Phil. Uh, they were as follows. Anion, Wiseman, Ogwu, Sinet, O'Grady, Rea, uh, Reed, Weir, plus the substitutes, Brewster and McCourt. So nine was the answer. So let's have a look at the leaderboard. So the back headers is at the top. He answered quickest, or they answered the quickest. Tony Tesco. And then Zeus, the winner of the first quiz. He's straight in in third place. Ben Smith as well, handily placed on the same number of points. It does differentiate on the time, so Zeus must have answered that just a little quicker than Ben. Uh, Ronnie Rocket, then no Pembo, no party. He's a familiar name as well. So let's go on to the second question. So who are the opponents celebrating scoring at Saltergate in November 2008? This is an emerging photo. So you'll see a photo coming on the screen when I press the start. You're going to be answering either Spennymore Town, Basingstoke Town, Droylsden, or Enfield Town. Now the thing is now, do you go early and get as many points as possible, or do you hang on? You'll see the points going down. So the quicker you answer, the more points you get. So from now. So you see a very blurred image. It will gradually become clear. But at the moment, very difficult to make it out. It's in the fog. 15 seconds left. Don't wait until the end and miss out on some points. You've got 10 seconds remaining. So less than 100 have answered so far. Five seconds now. Quickly answer. And the answer is Droylsden. 116 answering there. Droylsden the answer. And... 87 of you got that right, so 
take a look at the leaderboard. Zeus goes to the top of the table, the winner of the very first quiz, and makes a great start here. Let's go on to the next one. So Phony Lamb Inn is an anagram of which former spa right? Is it Phil Robinson, Ronnie Phillips, Phil Bonneman, or Phil Brown? Answer from now. So Phony Lamb Inn, is it Phil Robinson, Ronnie Phillips, Phil Bonneman, or Phil Brown? You see the points going down on the top right hand of the screen. The figure next that's shooting up is the number of people who have answered. Of course, the clock ticking down on the left-hand side. Five seconds left, quickly. 129 answering. How many got Phil Bonneman? C. Most of you got that. 109. So it's going to be down to fastest finger first. Let's take a look at the leaderboard. Zeus. Establishing his lead still at the top. Just one point ahead of Carefree and then lead Spyrite. Tony Tesco just outside the top. And there he is, West Spar Spyrite, the winner last week. He emerges as a solid contender in fifth place. Just ahead of no Pembo, no party. On to the next one. So who is this? Is it Martin Allen? Is it Tommy Wright? Is it Paul Cook? Or is it Glyn Snodden? Answer from now. There's somebody pulling his top over his head. But who is it? Is it the Mad Dog? Is it the former assistant manager and caretaker manager? Is it Paul Cook? Or is it another former assistant in Glyn Snodden? Over 100 people answering now. Quickly get an answer in. Only five seconds left. And the answer is, of course... Martin Allen. So let's take a look. And how many got that right? 56, so around half have got that uh, who took part, got that right. So let's take a look at the leaderboard. Carefree goes to the top just ahead of Zeus. Just uh, to tell you about that one, by the way, Martin Allen was covering up in embarrassment, having brought on more subs than agreed in the pre-season game at Alfreton Town. Uh, neglected to mention that after the previous answer, the uh, Droyles to match the score of the only goal in the abandoned FA Cup match was Carl Lamb, who of course went on to join the Sparites for an extended trial period under Paul Cook. An interesting character, Carl Lamb. Prolific goal scorer at non-league level. So carefree at the top of the table. On to the next question. So only one player has ever made their Sparite Football League debut as a substitute, only to be substituted themselves later. And who was that? Was it Jerome Benin Williams, Andy Kellett, Delisle Brewster, or Reese Brown? Answer from now. Remember, you can't change your answer, so your Answer is final, there's no turning back. And the quicker you answer, the more points you stand to gain. Good to see the numbers shooting up well past 100. Counting down, five seconds remain. Just answer anything, just to have a chance. 136 answering, and Andy Kellett was the answer. That caught, up, that caught quite a few people out. A lot of people thinking it was Reese Brown on 58. Delar Brewster also getting 33. But the least popular answer, Andy Kellett. And that was Newport away. 4-1 in 2017. So that could have made things interesting on the leaderboard. Carefree at the top. Head of M&G, Tom. And the Spyrax fan, 1996. Zeus. The early leader dropping down to fifth. So, plenty of competition at the top of the table. On to the next one. So again, an emerging photo. You'll see gradually a photo of a player emerge. And it's going to be either Nicky Rizzo, Sebastian Grimaldi, Kyle Critchell, 
or Paul Burton? And you can answer from now. So using different effects, this one's like a pool. That's where I look at it anyway, or a puddle. And you can gradually see the photo emerge, or it's like one of those crazy uh, mirrors that you get in Blackpool. So Nicky Rizzo, Sebastian Grimaldi, Carl Critchell or Paul Boateng. A few seconds remain, quickly get an answer in. And the answer is Nicky Rizzo. 42 of you got that right. What's that done to the leaderboard? M and G, 113 followed by Carefree and then the Spy Rights Band, 1996. On to the next one. So how many players made at least one appearance for Chesterfield in the 2017-18 season? Is it 31, 36, 41 or 46? An answer from now. So how many players made at least one appearance for the Sparites in 2017, 18, 31, 36, 41 or 46? 10 seconds remain, quickly get an answer in. And the answer is C, 41. Nine players made four or less appearances that season. Forgot to mention the previous one. Nicky Rizzo made four appearances on loan from NK Dons in 2007. So how many got C? 50. 50 got C. So MG was at the top of the leaderboard. Is he still there? He is. 136 and a 24-point lead over Tom. And then Mary with Carefree just outside the top. Zeus dropping down. I don't know if he's got problems with connection, which he, he had last week. And it dropped out. Could well be. Let's take a look at the next question. So from which team did Chesterfield sign this player, the one in the red and white kit? Was it Rangers, Oxford United, MK Dons or Kilmarnock? Answer now. So the player in the red and white kit for the Sparites came from either Rangers, Oxford United, MK Dons or Kilmarnock. Ten seconds remain. And the answer is Kilmarnock. That's because it's Peter Levin signed from Kilmarnock in 2007. Also played for all of the clubs offered as possible answers. So Kilmarnock was the answer. And how many got that right? 60 of you got that right. Is MG still at the top of the leaderboard? He certainly is. MG 136, but only three points of difference now. Mary doing well. Carefree also on 133. Let's move on. So in the last match played by Chesterfield, the one-all draw at Dover on 14th of March, which ex I played for the home side? Was it Alex Kiwamia, Oscar Goburn, George Smith or Jermaine McGlashan? Answer from now. Hope you're all enjoying the quiz. There's some obviously playing for the first time tonight. We're looking to do this every Wednesday night with answers, uh, sorry, questions and answers set by Phil Tooley. Five seconds remain, so quickly get your answer in. The answer is Oscar Goburn. So he made three appearances on loan for the Spy Rats in 2014 before being sent back to Huddersfield for allegedly not turning up for training. How many got B, Oscar Goburn? 42, but a lot of you going for George Smith, also McGlashan getting 28 and Kiwami 22. So a fair spread of answers there. So that could have changed things at the top. Let's take a look. Is M and G still the outright leader? Yes, he is. But just one point ahead of Carefree, 
Healy can test the battle at the top there. Monday's Child, 138, emerges in the top three. Then Mary, who I think was second at one point, 133. On to the next question. So Mark Hudson and teammates celebrating his 87th minute winner in a televised game to give Sparrance their first ever win at the club, whom they first visited over 103 years earlier. Was that Plymouth? Was it Bristol Rovers? Exeter City? Was it Bristol City? Answer from now. So we're looking for a televised game that gave Sparrance their first ever win at which club? And one they visited over 103 years earlier. So Plymouth Argyle, Bristol Rovers, Exeter City, or Bristol City. Five seconds remain. Quickly get an answer in. And the answer, Bristol City. D. Most of you are getting that right. 84. So has that made a difference to the top of the leaderboard? No, M and G is still there, but Monday's Child still in contention with Mary as well and Carefree doing well. On to the next one. So Chesterfield have played Wrexham in league and National League matches more than they've played any other club. That's 110 times. How many of those games have been won by the Spartans? 41, 46, 51 or 56? Answer now. So the Sparites facing the Red Dragons more than any other club, 110 times in total. But how many times have Chesterfield emerged victorious? 41, 46, 51 or 56? A few seconds remain. And the answer is 51. That's compared to Wrexham's 34 wins and 25 draws. So C is what we're looking for. How many got that? Most popular answer, 51. So what's that done to the leaderboard? M and G was at the top. He's been there for a while now. Is he still there? He's, he is or she is. I'm going to say they are. So they are still at the top. In fact, I'm guessing perhaps two people. Could be Mike and Glenda, or Maureen and Gloria, or could be any any number of permutations. Spire Power emerging as the second place now, 175. Ben Smith, Ben doing well on 173. Well done, Ben. West Bar Spireite is uh, coming up on the rails. It disappeared for a while, but... Uh, Doing well, of course, the uh, winner last week. Uh, let's move on. So we're past the halfway stage. The late Peter Whittingham here at Saltergate in a pre-season match in 2006. Who was he playing for then? Was it Burnley, West Ham, Cardiff City or Aston Villa? Answer from now. So Peter Whittingham sadly passing away recently. Great talent. Well, who was he playing for in this photo? Was it Burnley, West Ham, Cardiff or Villa? Ten seconds remain. And the answer is Aston Villa. So, D. D answered by 76 people. So, leaderboard time. M and G still there, 204. But West Bar Spyrite is desperate to hang on to his crown. Moves up to second place and uh, 14 points separate the top two. Now, I've been asked by Phil on the messages to... A look at uh, further down the leaderboard. Been uh, wrapped up in the top of the table, but we shouldn't ignore the the ones further down, of course. Zeus, the winner from the first quiz. 
don't know if he's been having connection problems or if he's just having an off night, but he's 23rd at the moment. Newt's gluten-free ale. Love the, uh, love the name. Spoke to the Newt earlier, if I can just have a, a break from asking the questions. Had a lengthy chat with Bob Newton, some great stories as always. And of course, as we know, the Newt only drinks gluten-free. Of course. <laughs> so, further down, I've got somebody I know there at the bottom of this screen, Duncan Fletcher, in 44th place. Let's look further down. Tibby Spyrite, guessing from Tip Shelf. Benno Spire Moondog. No Pembo, no Party was doing well early on. Some good names there. Um... Further down we go, Flip Flop Fondot, that jumps out, that name. Recognise that one from before. Oh, Zeus is uh, messaging saying that he's uh, got no problems with connection yet. So, just having an off night. Did well in the first one and won that ahead of West Barn Spa, right? But last week having problems with connection, glad to hear it. Um, let's go further down the leaderboard. Kev, but not Davis. Give it to Randall. Red Scousers. Oliver's Army. Zoe's uncle. Could that be Zoe Edge's uncle? Um, further, further down we go. Emma Tooley. At the top of this board. But down in 111th place. So, uh... Can't her accuse her of uh, tapping, tapping up her father for, for the answers. Because um, if she's a cheat, she's a very bad one. And talking of cheating in quizzes, of course, we've got the uh, the quiz show at nine o'clock. The coughing major who went on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. So I'm sure that uh, there's plenty of people wanting to see that. So we'll rattle on with the questions very shortly. I'm uh, guessing the ones at the bottom have had some connect connection issues, not being able to sign in. So we've got 137 active, but 148 trying to take part. So let's go on to the next question. So Chesterfield once won an FA Cup tie at the Turnbull Ground, home of which club? Was it Whitby Town, Stelbridge Celtic, Harrow Borough, or FC United of Manchester? Answer from now. So an FA Cup tie won by the Sparrants at the Turnbull ground. It was either Whitby, Staley Bridge, Harrow or FC United of Manchester. A few seconds remain. Whitby Town was the answer. Won 3-1 there in 1984. So how many put Whitby Town? 55 that it caught plenty out. So let's take a look at the leaderboard. Is M&G still at the top of the pile? No, West Bar Spyrite takes over at the top. Desperate Tim is to uh, hang on to his crown. Edges ahead of M&G. Just got to tell you a quick anecdote here that's uh, come up on the YouTube comments, somebody, uh, Josh, says he met Bob Newton up at Lineker when I was about five with my dad. He promised me a sign ball from all the team. I'm still waiting nearly 20 years later, lol. Uh, good old Bob, never changes. <laughs> okay, on to the next one. Which match is this image from? So you can't see anything at the moment apart from the turf and the ball. But you're going to see a photo and it's going to be either the Manchester City League Cup win, the relegation saver against Luton, the Wrexham FA Cup quarter-final, or the win against Sheffield Wednesday in 2004, and we're going to start showing the photo now. So it's a swirly photo this time. Do you gamble, go early, and get as many points in the bag as possible? Or do you hang on until it becomes clear, and then you're certain of who it is? Plenty hanging on. This is only now 10 seconds remain, so you need to be getting your answers in very quickly. 
There's going to be plenty caught out here. Quickly get in your answer. And only 37 getting in in time. So it was the Luton Town relegation saver. David Reeves and Derek Niven on the final whistle. Shown there. And that was the 1-0 win. Courtesy of Glenhurst last, last gasp winner. Okay, so on to see who's got that right. So only 10 getting that right. So that could have had an impact at the top of the table. Evan G returns to the top. Great comeback to overhaul West Bar Spyrite. Three points of difference. Reggie for POTY. And then Mary, who's been a consistent performer, dropping down to fourth place. On to the next one. So according to Stuart Basson's excellent cfchistory.com website, which was the most common scoreline in Chesterfield League matches between 1921 and 2018, with 463 instances in that time. Was it 0-0? Nil, 0-1, nil? Nil that's a Spyrite's defeat. A 1-0 Spyrite's win. Or 1-0? Answer from now. Great question. Great one for you... Stato's out there to try and answer that one. So according to Stuart Basson's CFChistory.com, we're looking for the most popular scoreline in matches between 21 and 2018. 0-0, 0-1, 1-0 or 1-1. few seconds remain. And the answer is 1-all. So there have been 463 1-all draws, 308 Goalless draws, 358 1-0 defeats and 355 1-0 wins. So, great question. How many got that right? 55. So, the most popular answer. And importantly, at the top, what's that done? West Fast Fire that goes back to the top. Four points ahead of m and And then Mary, 227. So let's move on. So which of Chesterfield's National League opponents play here? We're looking for either Red Fleet United, Oldershot Town, Woking or Dagenham and Redbridge. Answer from now. So it's a ground that Chesterfield played against, uh, played at. Epsley, Oldershot, Woking or Dagenham and Redbridge. Quickly answer, we have five seconds remaining. And the answer is Epsley United, it's Stonebridge Road. How many got that right? A? 60, the most popular answer. So is West Bar Spyrite or is MNG at the top of the table? West Bar Spa, right, 274, 10 point lead at the top. Gate said Blues emerging there in third place. Mary still performing well in fourth. On to the next one. So, which Spa, right, league season started off with these results? So, uh, Barnsley at home won. Barnsley away lost. Shrewsbury Town away won. Rochdale home drew. And Millwall away won. Was it 2014 15, 15 16, 16 17? All 17, 18, answer from now. So that was the sequence at the start of a particular season. The game's there, winning home to Barnsley. Defeat at Sheffield United. Win at home, well, away at Shrewsbury. Draw at home to Rochdale and a win at Millwall. So 2014, 15, 2015, 16, 2016, 17, 2017, 18. Five seconds left, quickly answer. And the answer is 2015-16. That was the start of the Dean Saunders reign as manager. So B, the one we're looking for. How many got that right? 65. So 65. Leaderboard time. West Bar Spy right. 304 is going to take some catching now. Good lead at the top. Ahead of M&G. And then Mary. And Monday's Child in fourth. So, on we go. A few questions remain. Who is this taking in the raise 
at the 2007 photo call. So you're going to see once again an emerging photo in a moment inside the Kevin Gray, Josh Law, Jamie Winter, or Dan Gray. So it's like a jigsaw puzzle, this one. You'll see the picture, the pieces in the jigsaw gradually being put in place. But who is it showing? Is it Kevin Gray, Josh Law, Jamie Winter, or Dan Gray? So the picture very much near, well, nearly complete now. Slotting in the final few pieces, five seconds left. And the answer is Jamie Winter. A note about Jamie. Signed that summer from Aberdeen. Currently playing Scottish Junior Football for Carnoustie Panmur. Nicknamed the Galfers. Top of the East Super League uh, when football was halted. So, um, seems a bit old to be playing for Scottish Junior. <laughs> Presume that means a very low grade level in Scotland rather than a young age. Let's take a look at how many got Jamie Winter. I imagine that's a popular answer. It certainly was. 73. What's it done to the leaderboard? West Bar Sparite at the top still. 325. M&G who's been a very good performer tonight in second place. And uh, a note from Phil there on the comments. Says that he was chatting with Jamie Winter this week. Desperate to pop down to the pro act. So hopefully we'll see Jamie Winter at some point. So I make it that this should be the it is the penultimate question of the evening. So only four players in Chesterfield uh, all-time top twenty appearance makers played at the B2 Next Stroke Pro Act. That's Tommy Lee, Ian Brecken, Mark Allett, and Derek Niven. But how many times did all four start together in league games at the new stadium? Was it 3, 13, 23, or 33? Answer from now. So the four players in the all-time top 20 appearance makers, Tommy Lee and Brecken, Mark Allett, Derek Niven, how many times did they all start together in league games at the... New stadium. 10 seconds, under 10 seconds now remaining. This is going to be an interesting one. That's a fair spread of answers, I would imagine. And the answer is A, 3. Uh, all in 2010-11. One nil wins against Torquay and Stevenage. And the 2 all draw against Bradford City. That was the final time they all played together. How many got that right? 46 getting that right. So 46, the answer. West Bar Spire, Spire right. right. 320, can still be caught as we're going to the last question. Monday's child going up to second place. MG, the early leader, just edged out of second. Mary doing well, still in fourth place in Kev Wack and Ben Smith. Okay, so hopefully we're all ready for the final question. This is going to be another emerging photo. So this could be a real leveller. And we're going to be asking, who are Chesterfield's opponents in this match? The final question. Is it Swindon Town? Is it Bristol City? Is it Middlesbrough or is it Manchester United? Answer from now. So this is a photo which will gradually emerge. You can see it's scrambled at the moment. Do you gamble and go early? Or do you wait to see until it's a little clearer? We're looking for Swindon, Bristol City, Middlesbrough or Manchester United. Facing the Sparrows, of course. Quickly answer. There's plenty of it not answered yet. Five seconds left. Need an answer. And it's Manchester United. Only 56 answering them. A lot hanging on. Took too long to uh, put in your answer. Let's take a look. How many got D? Only 12. So that could have had an impact at the top. Let's take a look. Then at the final leaderboard. Oh, just uh, before we do that, just tell you about uh, 
that photo from John Duncan's testimonial match in 2002. United won 5 0 with goals from Laurent Blanc, Ruud van Nistelrooy, Diego Forlan, Roy Keane, and Kieran Richardson. So uh, let's take a look at the leaderboard. We start with the top three. Who's won it tonight? It was West Barcelona, and he's won it again. 3 2 5. Monday's child in second place, and then M and G. Well done to the top three there. Let's take a look further down the leaderboard, see if you see your name. Mary did well amongst the top five or six, I think, pretty much all the way through. Kev Wag, Ben Smith, Rich, then the Spire Rat fan, 1996. Will Dean and then Spire Power, that's the top ten. Lead Spire Rites in 11th place. See further down the board. Go through these fairly quickly, so I'm sure there'll be plenty of wanting to watch the quiz on the hour mark, so about 10 minutes away. Lee, if it's the same Lee that was, I think, in third place in the uh, first quiz, in 32nd place tonight. And we keep on going. Newt's gluten-free ale. Around the halfway mark. Flip-flop fondop, which I think is a great name. And we're still we're going. No Pembo, no party. Featured quite prominently in the first one, I think. And still we go. We're now going to go into the, or just before the 100s. That's funny actually, Jenna Talia uh, took part in what I did for some students earlier this week, Jenna Talia, along with uh, Dixie Normus and um, Ben Dover and people like that. They were all in that one. So still we go all active there with over 100 points. Emma Tooley, 109th. And still we're going. Further and further down, Chester. That was Chester's field mouse. Needs to do some homework. Didn't do too well tonight. Rackstraw. I wonder if that's a friend of mine, Rackstraw. He'll have to tell me that because I'm presuming he was naming himself after Charlie Rackstraw, one of his heroes. And uh, I'm guessing that these were late to the party, perhaps. Struggled to sign in, then did eventually get in. My friend Chalky there, 139th place, but. I'm guessing that he uh, had problems signing in. And then the ones on zero, I'm sure that they had issues with connection or signing in or whatever. So there we are. Let's take a look once again. Oh, yeah, a couple more no-shows. But once again, congratulations to West Spar's Spy Right. Hangs on to retain his title. Welcome to West Bar Spire Right. And also the uh, other ones there in the top three. And thanks for uh, taking part. I'm uh, hoping that you enjoyed it. It was uh, good, good to, to finally, finally get underway. A few uh, technical, technical problems at the start, but uh, we managed to finally get it working. We're going to look to do these every Wednesday night at 8 o'clock. Just quickly a few mentions before we end the stream because conscious that it's nearly 9 o'clock and the TV is calling. Um, 
thanks to Phil Tooley once again for providing some great questions. Also, Tina Jenner, the club's photographer. Many of her photos uh, used, of course. Uh, Tina celebrating her 18th anniversary with the club last week, so uh, I'm sure she's been uh, enjoying some uh, golden bud from Brampton, Brampton Brewery to uh, celebrate her anniversary. Uh, just to mention, Chester's Quiz is going to take place at 10 a.m. on Saturday. That's one for uh, kids to take part in. A family fun quiz we're going to try on Sunday at 5 o'clock. Anybody will be able to have a go at that one. Um, not uh, intellectual questions are going to be very random and uh, very much trivia. And then, of course, on Saturday, we've got the live stream, as always, during the... Uh, virtual lockdown time and uh, we're running games every Saturday at three, well, from 3 o'clock and this week it's the turn of the FA Cup semi-final I'm sure we'll all re, uh, love to uh, relive that one um, and uh, we all remembered that yesterday the anniversary and uh, it'll be great to see that again uh, we'll see the full match streamed live here on our YouTube channel hope you've enjoyed it please do give us some feedback be interested to see what you all think about the quiz and uh, thanks very much for taking part once again so uh, we'll end the stream now and we'll hope to see you again thank you